Hello, I'm here to explain about scoped permissions on Android, what they are, why they suck, and how you can get around them. Let me show you something for example. I'm going to go to my file system with a built-in crappy file manager. I'm going to go to the Android folder and the data folder. There are 90 folders in this folder that you can't see because you don't have permission on your own phone to see your own program's data folders. You should always have permission, but this is how Android has determined that they're going to treat the files from now on. I have to have a workaround for this, and I can explain exactly why I can show you. Let's say about a year and a half ago I set up the ReDream emulator. I, I love this a lot. I would not have been able to set up this emulator correctly if I didn't have this. I want to show you an example with ReDream emulator because I have to have access to my own data files personally in order to use this emulator correctly. I'd like to show you ReDream emulator for Dreamcast. This is an excellent emulator. I've got some pretty good Dreamcast and Atomus Wave games in here. This does both CDIs and GDIs. It's a great emulator. It'll use the real BIOS or an alternate BIOS. I personally prefer the real BIOS because it gives me the ability to do this. Notice I can go here and access my saves. I can copy anything I want between any of these cards. I can copy and delete saves just like I was on a real Dreamcast. So this is really what I want. And if I ever don't want some of the saves or I need more space on my card, I can just move the save file and it'll auto-generate me a new one. I'd just like to show you one more thing. I've just taken the liberty of using the File Manager Plus program to move the BIOS files out of the folder and let me show you the result. If I go to the system menu, there's no boot to BIOS function. What that means is from now on, I'm just going to have to use individual saves for the games. Here it's able to actually manage the saves, but how am I going to get free save slots if I can't take the original VMU file and move it out of there and have it auto-generate me a new file? I can't. You can edit the saves like this, but notice all you can do is export save or remove save. Where's copy and delete? That's the functionality that I want, the functionality that was in the original Dreamcast. I saw some people talking in a forum the other day, and one of them recommended a program called File Manager Plus. He said by using this program, he was able to get around the permission restrictions. This at least works for now, so I would recommend trying this. You want to click allow when you first enter this program. I'm just showing you everything from the first run. Then you want to click main storage, click Android, and click data. Permission settings. You have to click OK and use this folder. Click allow. Now look at what I see in the folder. This is why I have to have access to my data folder. You see this folder called io.recompile.redream. I'm going to go in there now. These are all my VMUs here, and you don't see any BIOSes because I got rid of them, but here they are, they're back. Boot.bin and Flash.bin. If you don't have access to this folder personally, you will never be able to set up this emulator correctly, or some of the other emulators. So I'm starting to wonder, would that have worked with RetroArch? I posted that video about RetroArch the other day, about having to make a custom config for a workaround and I'm starting to wonder this myself could I just scroll down and go into the RetroArch and the config folder here I'm going to take this config and copy it bear with me for a second here I have to do this correctly ah here we are com RetroArch RA32 now could I just paste this config over the other one, click overwrite, and then let me get back out of this uh, file manager here. 
let me go into RetroArch and... Ooh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, but let me try something. Import content, scan folder. Yep. Yep. I can actually see my SD card, and I don't have to load a config file every blasted time I start RetroArch now. How nice is that? So there's one more fix for you. If you watch the RetroArch video, here's another way to get your RetroArch fixed up so you don't have to load the configuration file every time you start it. But thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.